Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is about the narcissist or the psychopath in this case, sort of ruling the roost, ruling their rule, ruling their world, sort of always things have to be done in accordance, in alignment, and you become a willing participant with this relationship or even with a larger picture, which might encompass sort of a feeling that you have to, you're sort of ruled by them for some reason, that you don't have um, ability to self-govern, self-rule, and have a sense of yourself um, by it being meaning your strengths. Um, and the narcissist, because they are very much ruled by their ego, meaning what they have, what they get, how they appear, which is ruled by an insatiable need for power and control. And then what does this look like, especially when it comes to relating or basically having rule over others? It doesn't become a very fluid, comfortable relationship. You feel like there's always something they're trying to uh, stop you short, black you. Um, you know, they always use the word, you know, they're the life blockers in you. They want to block your life. Um, you know, you heard of whatever block, you know, in relationships, you know, they wouldn't let that, uh, you know, whatever that word is, you know, I'm not going to say it, but you know, when another guy kind of steals your girl and he got in first, it's sort of like, that's their rule. They want to sort of always sort of slide in to home base, right? When you're walking to sort of in your own presence, your own, I am meaning having a strength or that sense of self, your identity, which doesn't need to be ruled by ego. See, that's the whole fallacy. That's the whole predicament. That's the whole issue. And that is the problem when you're up against a narcissist or a psychopathic relationship, they tend to set the rules. And oftentimes the rules are very much designed to keep you uh, disabled, keep you unempowered, namely keep you afraid, intimidated, or scared. Because if they can get you to that point, you're like, um, you know, a little tiny beating heart in the palm of their hand or a little mouse. They can do whatever they want with it. They have you in the palm of their hands. Well, guess what, you guys? There's something bigger. There's a bigger hand that has you in the palm of their hand, namely your sanity, your I am, your happiness. So if you are with a narcissist, much of their communication, the dates, the relationship, how it progresses, and what you see is going to be ruled by their ego, meaning their I, that what they are is going to precede everything. It's like you're getting into a car and rather than it being a Mercedes, BMW, or a Hyundai, it's got to have the narcissist label. They always want to sort of, they sort of imbue themselves into everything and not in a constructive or strengthening way. It is in a destructive and demoralizing and makes you weaker. Um, you are not oftentimes feeling that you are made stronger in specific ways. They will sort of rule you so you, if they can keep you in sort of that fear, uh, second guessing, I really don't know, there's something going on, but we don't want to talk about it. All that sort of tight lip that you sort of put up and you sort of assume the role, assume the position, assume that you're following along like a little duck uh, in a row. You know, they that is their support system. They, they need to have this sense of control in mediation over everything. And most people find that disconcerting, especially when they're trying to move you, you know, like a little, like a, here's you, you know, this is an adventure in rock, but they're trying to move you around as if you're their pawn. And then you're as if, you know, you have stripes here. If you don't, you have stripes weakness here. I mean, it's all according to their rule and it oftentimes has nothing to do with reality. It's just their, it's just their need to have power and control and judgment to control an outcome 
that's going to be more beneficial for them um, in the in the long run. So that's their eye of the prize. That's what they're looking for. They want to make sure you know that they have the certain ego adornment. Um, meaning a facade. They want to appear as if. These are the people who, you know, then get you sort of uh, lost in their sauce, drinking the Kool-Aid. Uh, you know, tr you're not the, you're not the boss. Uh, you're not the boss's boss. You're the boss's basically boss servant. You know, you're kind of, uh, you're bossed around, but they make you feel as if you're with the boss, as if you should be so cool, you know, as if you then fit in and belong. And you see larger companies as a, in cultures will do this as well. Um, and so they're getting more uh, pronounced at that. So sort of that ego um, and controlling of you, controlling, you know, especially now in the mass media, you know, they want you to pay attention to certain things as that they deem important. And it just like a narcissist does, just like I have found that every time when I go on MSN, there's always, it's like an ongoing thing about Kim Kardashian and their whole relationship. And as if, why are they so important and why? Because they have 220 million followers. That shows you sort of the mass consciousness of people who can sort of buy into this sort of drama and this sort of appearance and fantasy as if it's like uh, they're hypnotized, they're transfixed, um, they're you know they want that uh, there's something attractive uh, they desire, they want to be that cool, have the whatever, you know, and and appear as if. Like I said, if men don't start getting uh, plastic surgery. Uh, that's going to be it for me. It'll show you how false the economy has become. You know, that that economy, which is created by very, very people like you and me, that means you are that important. <laughs> Your choices are that important. Your I am is that important. What you do, what you cast your eyes on, what you cast your heart on, and what you cast your time and your blood, sweat, and tears on is that important. Um, and, and so when a narcissist kind of has you in their grip, they, they, it is very a cold sort of according and a molding according to what they think that you should be. Not what you should be, it's what they think you should be. And it's their rule, their ego rule. So they, you know, and then it, it, it you know, and you'll find that then you're, you're living, and this rock is very cold. I'm going to stop holding that one. That one is for growth. And it really uh, it gives me a message that you really have to release and let go of those things that are cold. I love rocks. I studied earth science and geology and such in college as part of my degree. I'm absolutely fascinated. But anyway, to me, they're really uh, amazing uh, gifts of uh, natural organic beauty in the universe that are really spellbinding. In fact, there was just this uh, thing in the in the news about this 500... 561 carat black diamond that just went for, I don't know how many millions, but, you know, and a lot of those are, are made from like intercellar, uh, you know, carbons and different things. So they're really rare, really, uh, really powerful, uh, you know, and very precious. But anyway, so when, when, the, and they will, they will, uh, you know, tell you to go basically tell you to run tell you to live, tell you to be in the wrong direction that is contrary to your own, uh, basically or organic, your own, your own soul, your own imaginings, really what is in your best interest, but more really what is there in the DNA, in the composites of the strength of your being, you see, because they, they don't want you to harness and have that because to them, it might shut them out. You might supersede them. You might outshine them. You might point them out. They might get found out. They might get called out. And then they can no longer have that mass to hide upon. Because if you get smart enough, if you get good enough, if you question them enough, you'll see that they're superficial or they're lazy or they're lying or they're not supportive of you. So it, it's it, they don't even have to be doing all sorts of horrendous things, but if they're doing the contrary, neglectful, uh, not supportive, uh, never a smile, never anything warm or close. It's always 
uh, governed by their terms of engagement. Um, and then you find that you're living for them or from the outside in and just sort of showing up in the physical body and really running it to the ground. You're like a, an emotional jalopy. You're just, you know, you got your tires falling off. You got, you know, smoke off the back end, but you just hope you make it there. You know, it's, that's your emotional level because you'll become, you'll, you'll become that disharmonized with yourself because if someone is intimidated or will not recognize or give validation or cannot bear witness, um, and of your strengths, meaning acknowledge and validate and just being you. So the real authentic you is your strength, the false fear adapted you, that is your weakness. They will have you li live in weakness, just like Facebook would have you live in weakness. If you can forever or watch TikTok, I don't even do that, but I guess, you know, it's a lot of people who watch uh, dancing and all, and they're just not paying attention. Meanwhile, you know, all sorts of things are going on and they don't, they're not even aware. Uh, real important things. For example, real true human needs, real, you know, true causes going on. They, they, they don't have, they just don't care. They will flaunt their egoism. They will flaunt their egotistical values. They'll flaunt their egotistical rules and make you appear or basically more try to ground you down to feel as if you are n nothing. So they're trying to put you in the dark and at every chance of every day, they'll try to remind you of what you are not because they are what it's all about, you know, now and f for all, you know, so for that, it's all about them. And then they're, they're trying to call things out. See, they, they get their power by trying to call things out. They like assume the role, you know, of judges is, is as if you could have someone who just walks out to a picnic bench and it's just like, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. I now say that, you know, you, um, you know, no longer can, your money is no longer good here, uh, because you're not vaccinated or something, you know, they're trying to set the rules as, as if like, you know, just in relationships, they're trying to be very defined what's in and what's out. This very, uh, oftentimes cold, uh, um, relentless and um oftentimes it is that they, they know that the uh, the narcissist knows who to call out and who to really rebuff and who to hold in close i mean they know how to hold them and then when to fold them these are your master people card players they know when to pull you in when to throw you out let me pull in another card let me see what they got they're good for a date for this and then maybe so they they will just help themselves to whatever, whomever, whenever, or whatever. They might steal things from your house, strange things from your office. They might carve things. They might be very possessive of, uh, of objects um, or people or relationships that will make you crazy, that will make you seethe with anger or jealousy. They will brainwash and gaslight as part of their communication style as if they rule, but there's always something behind that tendency and it's for them and it, it is not for you. It's not for a common <clears throat> um, shared um, equality in relationship. They always have to have the uneven, you know, uh, it, it gets really difficult. You know, if they always have to be here, it, it becomes, you know, you can barely, you know, you're just this. And if you try to get better, then they make it even worse. Then they roll the eyes. Then they have an affair. Um, then they, you know, you're getting close to, you know, uh, you know, uh, p pleasing them. In other words, when you're this, then, you know, when you earn this income, when you um, have this job, when you are this funny, then you will maybe get closer. So they have these uh, patterns of false promises that are, are not based on commitment. They are not based on real love and real trust. They're based on them conveniently roping and harnessing in whatever it is that they need for their needs, but furthermore, to overpower others. So, and then with overpowering comes exploitation.
taking advantage of. Meaning, how can they squeeze you so hard to get what, you know, keep you along and then you not, you know, really happy about things, whether it's your job as well. You know, this can be in a job environment, a family reliant, you know, environment where they will ultimately make you the weaker and not the stronger. And they can do that um, sometimes in very covert ways, which was by being aloof, by um, ignoring you, by act as if you don't matter, walking by you as if you don't exist, um, not validating your strengths, um, but always focusing on your weaknesses. And your weaknesses can be made up. These are known as false accusations. Then you can become very depersonalized. You can very feel then very filled with uh, guilt and all these other emotions that have no rightful place there until you give them, uh, you know, the, the, the vacancy sign. Um, guilt, you're out of here. Uh, you're not making me stronger. I'm looking at things uh, realistically now. You know, you're, you're no longer living along a false reality when you get to exploit them and when you get in your strength. See, that's why people, they're so resisting their strength because they've been so enamored or enthralled by this person that they came to believe them and trust them better than they came to know, believe, or trust in themselves. So because the foundation wasn't there, they were, you, you became willing and complicit in, in going along with their game plan. Maybe you had to, maybe you were required to, maybe you were love bombed, maybe you were, you know, you, you had this sort of in the beginning, things were in such and such a way and you were, it was, you know, all hum, dunk and Mary. I mean, you couldn't found a better day, you know, but you had something to work on and it should have been working on you, but did you always find yourself working on them, doing for them, paying attention to them? Letting, you know, and then allowing yourself to be molded, you know, like this, their ego trying to mold you into something that you are not. You find yourself breaking your back, breaking your neck, uh, throwing your, your hip out, throwing your voice out. And you're like someday, you know, or, you know, eating things that you don't want, listening or wearing outfits that you don't want, jobs that you don't want to be in, going to events you don't even care about. And you're feeling it's very vapid and empty. That was the feeling, you know, that I got when, um, so, you know, being, being based, um, and doing like new product development and like, uh, the, you know, for the companies. And we went out to like West Hollywood, which is really the only place I've been in California. I would love it's, you know, but when, when I went to, so that's where the Hollywood is and everything. And that's where everybody's like walking around like, oh my God, I can't believe how, cool I am, you know, I mean, they are just so enamored with who they are. I mean, you know, there are some great talent out there. I'm not ditching the place, but the people who are the wannabes or who want to be like that, which then are the great influencers, I, I would say even more than our, uh, our U.S. government would be, uh, you know, the, the entertainment industry and, and, and probably one family probably, uh, owns all of it for all we know. I think they do like all the investments beyond that. It just goes to show you, you know, this, there's a, a, some people, they have a seething need for power and control. So rather than waking up and, and, you know, and having, um, humility or gratitude or, I had a great night's sleep, you know, thank you body for doing your job and making it restful and restored. And thank you body, now that I'm eating well, I can feel the difference. I'm eating fresh fruit and veggies and I'm not drinking the sugar or the alcohol or ingesting those kind of even feelings or memories because ingesting that kind of communication is kind of like junk food. It's kind of like sugary uh, donuts that just make you feel empty or vapid. So. I learned that I was sensitive very on to my palate, but when I went to um, Hollywood and we did that, you know, there for whatever that stint um, that they flew us in for, you know, stayed in, um, and I was like, oh, there's David Spade and there's, you know, Louie Louie or whatever, all the people, and everybody's just trying to be like, oh, you know, and I just remember I was there, they gave us some funds for, you know, 250 for the day, something extravagant, you know going and we had to, it's all up and down. It's not a very Walker friendly, 
Um, I mean, there aren't a lot of buses, so it's like really craggy. And so, and then you're just trying to, you know, um, be there and someone's like trying to walk. Around. Oh my God. Like you're, I love your, uh, your bracelet, you know, that's so, you know, and, but, and it's just so false and it's just not like, Oh, you know, it's just, it, and it breeds and it breeds more of that on the daily. See, is what I'm saying. And when I left there, I found it, it was very vapid and I could not wait to get back home to my home uh, area because it has a lot of soul, breadth, depth, and vitality as well as style. It's not, you know, um, and I, I keep a lot of my identity, of course, here because of the nature of the channel and everything. I keep that concealed, you know, here for the privacy just as we do for yours. And by the way, huge shout out to those of you who have recently donated to the channel. Thank you so much. It's my honor and pleasure to be able to have this discourse and uh, dialogue with you because oftentimes it's so much wanton or lacking and it leaves you, you know, empty or vapid, you know, um, in, you know, in the shape for somebody else, you know, um, and not the shape for true who you are within based on your strengths. So you become in very vapid. It means very empty. Um, it means without, it just, it's sort of missing something. There's a certain buzz that, or a certain sort of walk that the certain, you know, the city of big shoulders or what other cities, you know, you might think of, um, or, you know, the windy city or what other some areas, you know, the, the sunshine state, um, you know, they're known for other things or their national birds and things, but you know, certain relationships that are based on ego, they're going to be very stressful and they're going to cause you to become very exhausted and empty. And you're not going to feel that it's a, a sustainable relationship. It is not eco-friendly. It is not environment friendly. It'll cause you to be polluted and to feel that you're living a polluted life in one that is not based within true sensuality, being in a comfortable body, feeling alive and vibrant, feeling okay. You know, peace of mind is the greatest commodity in the world. People, you know, would, you know, spend millions to, to find it, you know, and then might never have it because they go chasing after it. The narcissist gameplay is oftentimes in the chasing. It's not in the making. It's in, you know, you're, you're, there's always a fall. There's, there's never a building. There's always sort of a degradation. This, this is not in the name of love. A lot of people have a misnomer. They get a little confused about what love means. So they might, you know, find themselves, you know, caving into this ego-based relationship or culture. So that is very much what I studied in school. In other words, because oftentimes those are traps. They're, it's like a, a popcorn trail. Da, 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 da. And what is the outcome? You know, it is oftentimes to make you weaker, poorer, self-doubting, um, you know, never enough. Um, you don't, you, you are not enough. So it has to be based on something else is if you have to earn your worth day in and day out, you should have that already going on like the $51 million cube of gold that was, you know, found in, in Central Park a couple of weeks ago, your I am is like that golden cube that just shows up. You are that worthwhile. You are that important. Your happiness and your peace of mind is worth all that. That is what all the chase is about. The narcissist feels like well, it's not really stimulating enough. They're, it's their choice. It is not anything that you have done wrong. It is their choice to see disharmony. It's their choice to see hatred. It's their choice to see a problem. They put that on the very situation. It is the way of looking at it. You can either get the chocolate ticket to the Willy Wonka chocolate factory, you know, and be around all sorts of strange situations and you're doubting yourself, but you just hope you eat enough chocolate and you find the golden ticket. 
when you've already got the ticket, you just forgot to open up within. You, for, you forgot to check in within. They somehow got more important on your to-be list. You know, um, or that, or that, or that job, or that boss, or that colleague, or that love relationship, or that memory. You know, people have all these memories. I mean, as if the person is still there, you know, living by their commands, and they they never feel free enough to live their own life because that person made them feel bad for having one, and then they blame them for not having a life. It's like they have created the very problem which which they are you know scolding at scaffing at it's usually you know as if because anytime a narcissist is putting down they're simultaneously trying to put themselves up which you know so you know hey some things are funny if you can laugh at yourself these people don't you know have oftentimes a certain uh, sense of humor you know they they do not laugh at themselves they're the ultimate very very serious gravely serious, oftentimes brooding people, you know, and they get very, they get hung up over things that they should let go. And you find maybe a lot of your relationship is spent helping them, uh, you know, letting things go, helping them. Uh, so being their support system, Hey, jump on my back. Hey, yeah, I got this. Hey, yeah. You know, and then meanwhile, you know, you, you broke your back and they're like, I got to go. Nope. You're weird. You're, you got, you're, you know, and then they'll mistreat you. And then that is the worst because that will leave a lasting impression oftentimes, because oftentimes what you're finding out it is what was there in the beginning. So you can save yourself a lot of time, just like when you look at other sort of habits that you are not happy with, or that are not building you up or that are driving you crazy or driving you bonkers or driving you mad or beyond that, you know, bringing you to financial or emotional ruin, or you're just, you don't like how your environment has become and it's time for a change. Well, guess what? There's opportunity for huge change, especially right now with the pandemic. You have to re realize that there's a lot of free floating fear out there. Oh my, you know, don't go here. Don't go there. Don't touch. Don't look. Don't be close. Don't be close. Don't go. Cover up. Wear, uh, you know, wear a mask. You know, you don't, and, and oftentimes you don't realize the anxiety and the depression and the pressure that even though you don't acknowledge it and validate it, it's just coming at you from all angles, you know, um, from the peripherals. If you're, if you don't just, I'm, you know, if, unless you just turn it off, you don't have to go along and say, I have to be constantly have the, the TV on or constantly have that ego buzz going, of, you know, sort of being the follower. Um, oftentimes that is not beneficial to you and they might, you know, you might be criticized for things that you do. It has nothing to do with the truth or reality. You can be the way you want to be. You're not ruled by their ego. You're not ruled by them. You rule the roost. Your body is yours. And if we're not careful, they will rule it. And then they, they will have their, their outcome. They will have you anxious. They will have you questioning yourself. They will doubt your, namely doubting your strength. And, and really, you know, like they say, the saddest thing is that you can go through your life without your life, your, your, your life song, your life lived or your, your, your music song or your music played, you know, so many people who didn't go after things or just become things or pursue things or make changes because they didn't feel they had the power to or that they were allowed to. You know, they're still living under this rule uh, of tyranny, you know, that you could basically just put out, you know, you are not good enough. You are a slob. You are, you know, and that you're defining yourself by the negative and what you are not and what you don't have. So you don't, you don't, that's called negative validation. When someone is constantly, you know, uh, reinforcing a negative, um, and it, it can be from the outside to the inside. You don't have, you know, you're, you, you're not tall enough. You're not blonde enough. You're not um, manly enough. You're, you, you don't have the right shoes. Um, you don't have the right watch, the right tie, 
the right button up, um, with, or the right car, uh, you know, or intelligence. You know, those are the main factors that the woman will, you know, hit on, you know, to try to demasculinize you, you know, uh, and, and to pull that away from you, which is, you know, you're not providing enough, or that's usually the typical thing when they're maybe not pulling their weight, when they're being overly critical. They've got glasses on that say, criticize so-and-so, uh, and that's all they see. And like we were saying, you know, if, if you are you, okay, if you, and, and these, I love this, this is a smoky, uh, this is a very calming, this is a, in clearing, um, smoky quartz crystal, this is, it's a light brown, I just love the, uh, the, it has these different faces, and you can just see how it's all grown, all natural and organic, and it has like a inner cloud, uh, that's kind of grown within it, and it, I love because you can see it, it kind of, it grows into clarity, you know, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a person. You can grow from not really seeing, and this actually looks like a head, and this is kind of like the divine energy above you that's connected to greater imaginings, greater power, and it's it's really a physical representation um, because you truly do have energy. You truly do have power. I mean, if you, if you, you have power right now. I mean, look at what you've done in your life. You truly have power. Look at what you have physically, where you're living. You have power. You have you have these things. So you literally have power. But to the greater degree that you recognize it and then bring it out in fullness and allow and give permission. But if you're still living under, you know, this tyranny, you're doing something wrong. You're not good enough. This isn't perfect enough. If you've still got that playing, then the music of your soul, that's what it is going to be dancing to 24 seven. But if you, if you get rid of that old record set, too bad I got rid of mine. It would have been worth a lot. Had all the Rolling Stones, all the who, whoever else, Xanadu, all the eighties. I had all those albums. Anyway, they were very heavy also. So it etches a groove in you very much like a, a vinyl pressing. So when they make vinyl, they press on and etch on a recording. And then you put the needle on it and it plays the song. We used to have records back in the day. Some people are like, yeah, we're going to bring it back. It has such a great warm sound. You can hear all the stuff in the background. Well, music has changed too. And and, and, and you are, are changing also. And what you, um, how you feel and, and the strength that you live by is up to you. It is a choice. It is your determination. It is your decision. You are not ruled in, and by, so we're saying again, and, and the worst my, I had another tall one. Okay. So here's you, the tall one, you're all clear and in your strength, and why don't I do, or this is my interest, and you try to, you know, talk and discuss, because if you don't talk and discuss things, it's not going to come to life. You know, like they always say, you know, if you read a book, it's, it's better if you then talk about it, because you'll have better comprehension. The same thing is with your life, and with your feelings, and your emotions. If it's better to talk about it. And just like your strengths, your feelings, what went, went on with you today? What do you need? How are you doing? Are you hungry? Did that ever, does that kind of come up? You know, is it, is it equal or is it, is it like way imbalanced? If it, is it like 90% and then 10%? What do you want? Or maybe it's zero. Your percentage is way off. This is not fair. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to your future being that precedes you. Your strength precedes you. Your strength is an energy that precedes you. But they won't call that to being because they are terrified. They are frightened because if you are aware of that, then you might not put up with what they're dishing up. You know, they'll say, oh, you won't, you'll need something real. You'll need a real commitment. You'll need a real woman. You won't need the phony me that just pushes men around. You know, the female psychopath is a very difficult creature. You know, will will really use men um, and be very hurtful to men, yet men are always supposed to, oh, I got a bigger, I got to grow a thicker beard and I got to keep my head up a little higher. And, 
oh my God, my wallet, uh, my stomach, my roof sure ain't there anymore. But uh, I better grow, you know, they will take you until you go, whoa, my bag right here is small enough. If you want to leave me at the curb, this is as small as I'm going to go. It's just like, and how small do you want your next, you know, bag on the curb to be? Because this is what they'll do. They'll leave you as if you don't have anything, are nothing, you know, and that's, that can be very, a, a very emptying relationship, not in a, a purifying or way, but it can make you feel very empty. So meaning like you don't have anything you, they, and they, they don't, they don't really see you. So you can feel that they don't really see you, know you, accept you. There's, there's, you have to, there's many layers in this. It's just not what the narcissist says. See, but if you become with your strengths and you can say, I don't need this anymore. And then they, that could be terrifying to them because then you might leave the narcissist first. You might leave the psychopath first. You might expose them and they might end up looking worse. And that's what they want to prevent. That's what they want to control from. That's what they want the power over to them. Uh, it can be a very gamey way of living. No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's okay. The music of my soul, it's really coming out now, you know, and you don't want how many songs, you know, how many days do you want to listen to heartbreak songs? I don't have enough songs. I'm not good songs. And then you're eating the, I'm not good enough milkshake. You're eating the food that makes you feel sick anyway, but you always used to do this and you haven't taken stock. You haven't taken really examined or experimented with really your vitality, your energy, and your wellness. Instead, they're winning at the game right now. You know, you're, you're worried sick, you're worried stuck, you're worried broke, you know, you're just flat unhappy, you know, and, and, and that is something that you might have to articulate that has been, you know, oh God, I'm unhappy, peace and harmony. But this shouldn't make sense because I have this and this or the, you got to get that out there. You know, it's like, it's a, it's an energy. It's a feeling it's energy in motion. This is in your energetic, ethereal being, you know, that surrounds you and it, it emanates from you and it comes from a God source. I mean, you're part of, you know, you're part of this world. You're not just living for the narcissist. There's more to you than that. And you know it. But when you kind of feel like there's more to me and I know it and they don't want to see it, they don't want to know it, they don't want to help it or support it, then you know they have just sort of maxed out their relationship with you and that they haven't, they're not able to, to, you know, have that give and take. And then it's okay to say time out. See, but they'll try to make you feel as if you are guilty for having your strength or asking something different of them, which they cannot provide, namely, which would be a certain type of communication style, which would be honest, genuine, and just sort of more comfortable. See, but there's a certain communication style. The narcissist, nope, black, nope. See, they, they know because to them, they've got their eye on themselves and what they want. So their vision is just going to be like this. And if you, you know, they're, they're, they have a certain way and then they'll do whatever they need to do to deflect it. And, and the, they'll have a lot of other people around them that will, um, that will support that. And so you'll feel like the, the lone man going and you won't feel like you belong because of a certain way that you are treated. Um, and, you don't have to, you don't have to continue to be molded by them. You can be something different. You can be yourself. And that is magnificent enough. But be because they couldn't acknowledge it and validate that, that sometimes then it becomes very scary to live or embrace your truth, which is your freedom, which is your energy. It becomes unrecognizable. Happiness becomes true. Happiness becomes unrecognizable to yourself or when it's there, you don't recognize it. You don't know that you're happy because you have chronically 
been taught not to be. You've been chronically taught not to, to experience that. And so that's a physical compression or repression. You know, this is not just, oh, you know, I'll just, you know, if, if you just, if you, um, deny your, yourself and your needs in your true, in your true self that oftentimes can't be spoken to them, then that's for you in the privacy of your heart. But if you need to truly acknowledge and validate and get very clear, very, very clear about some things, and you'll find that they're not that attractive. Ooh. You'll find maybe I don't have to have a life that's all about Facebook. I don't have to do all that. Oh, I don't have to be in having such a such a job that, you know, the, that is fake, false, or where I'm not validated. Or I don't, you know what? That relationship, even though this, this, and this, it's really not good for me because, and I know it. And you don't, you know, beat yourself down and you get very clear. And once you regain that more and more, you'll realize that your mold that you were, were cramped under is opening. And you're able to be liberated and see, and you'll begin then to open what I call, you know, resensitizing in your healing. You have to resensitize. You have to give honor and respect and reverence for yourself because that is the experience that is you are kept away from and and not you're not able to share in that simultaneously. The room ain't big enough. It's me or you, Buster. It's me, you know, it's me the or the highway. It's this way the the ego ruling the egotistical way of life, you might not find that that is a good fit for you. Being unacknowledged, being unvalidated, telling that you're weak, that you're not good enough, that you don't measure up. That, you know, is, is basically going to become a very um, unwelcoming place. And then you'll feel that uh, your feelings are unwelcome to yourself. And then you'll begin pushing them down. And then they'll go unexpressed. And then when, when you do that long enough, it'll create a, a certain block of emotion that eventually will need and want to break out and break free and will find itself. If, if you go through the allowing and you're able to get it down on paper and you're able to use all of your senses to acknowledge and validate it. This is my truth and this is free and I am content. You know, or you can say, I am no longer attracted to the false or the fake, and therefore I do not have to be that way. I am not the woeful that they make me out to be. That is just their projection. So it's like they're literally putting on glasses that don't have anything to do with reality. It is their judgment, it has nothing to do with reality, it is their communication. It has nothing to do with reality. It is their demeaning body language. It is their stance. It is what then you had absorbed. If you were unprotected and you did not know better and you were wide open to this and you were just drinking that all in, you were drinking in their Kool-Aid, whoops, you bought into the program, whoops, you, you had to spend all of your day on Facebook trying to figure it out or how do I get enough friends or how do I get in my Instagram or how do I, you know, people go to all lengths, you know, to, to be as if and to have this false persona and it's a high maintenance lifestyle. And just because that is not you doesn't make you an awful, unlovable, woeful or un invalid or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, set up for, all the devastation that, that, that they are, are wreaking havoc. So, for example, you know, the Facebook of, of the world, they're not going to really care if, if someone uses their platform and shows a lot of pictures and it makes a lot of people jealous. As long as the people are on it, you know, but they don't, you know, for all, you know, all that. I mean, I, I'm not calling out Facebook, but I'm just saying there's a certain point that the narcissist will not or cannot care for others in the psychopath and then they, they eventually know it and eventually they'll then see it you know but what's really horrific is when this is you and your strength 
and you have certain innate strengths or qualities, desires and dreams that are driving you, that are, are, are drawing you forward, this is, this is, you know, your excitement. This is not your fear. This is my dream. This is my want. This is what I, what I wish. You know, this is what I see. This is my blueprint. How do I really get there? And if it doesn't include them, if you're no longer, if it's, you know, if you're, if you've had a, a highly idealized, you know, vision of what that identity was, and you might find that that isn't the right identity I am for you, you know, and just because, because of that, it can be very scary because you might have found that you have been holding that back or you have been unfree because of that for so long. And you didn't realize that you were holding yourself in place. You were holding yourself in that position. You were basically holding yourself emotional hostage and just taking that treatment, you know, and maybe you didn't know better. Maybe you didn't know that you could exit stage left or, you know, or that you are all these things and you deserve to be treated better. And you realize that you are that and you don't have to get crazy, but to begin to have a better sense of yourself in a balanced sense of self-worth and to be able to control and manage that. And then what does that mean for me now? See the narcissist and their rule here, here comes you with your strength. I'm, um, I'm good at, um, this, I'm good at art. I'm good at writing. I'm good, you know, oh, but you know, no, you know, no, you know, and then they have something better or they play it and they don't give you a chance to talk about it, you know, or, um, you know, Hey, uh, yeah, um, you know, there's a honey, it's something, there's something I really want to talk about. You know, we, I've already told you this weekend, we're doing this and this, and we don't need to do that. I, I've told you, you know, they just don't want to hear it. And that you get shut down, you get made into something different, and you can ultimately become invisible to yourself. Where did I go? You have just the narcissist left. You're here underneath. You're living in clarity all along. You've had clarity within but you haven't been able to be permitted to see, acknowledge, and validate it and get strength from it. Instead, you felt fearful or you bought the fear ticket instead of the, I am strong, I am loving, I'm not a good fit with um, an egotistical person of this nature. You can just, you know, or I'm not a good fit for this egotistical, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a Facebook person or I'm not an Apple person. How many people, you know, go along and they're going in the wrong direction? You know, they, 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 they're for the peer pressure, you know, and then, and then in your job, you can have a lot of this as well. Peer pressure, you know, they, they want to create an instant posse, an instant new rule, an instant new that, you know, wh whoever, who are they going to cut out? Well, certain people who could be threatening, Certain people who might um, do as good or better. Certain people who could have a voice or opinion, but they don't want to hear it. Oh, no. They don't want to hear. They will not give you time of day. No. <laughs> you will, and then you'll kind of like, well, what's wrong with me? Then, you know, the question is usually, well, what's wrong with me? And then you're, and then you're looking for the wrong in you. Is, that's a great way to start a, a, a conversation, what we, what we call it in psychology, intrapersonal communication. This is by far, I think, one of the most important roles or strengths you will learn. And you might feel that this is scary, but once you harness this in all the many ways, it can, um, it can transform you. When I call like my multi-sensory and sort of quantum field, quantum energy approach, because there's something better. There's an energy, a strength that comes to you. And it can be a very peaceful, strong, you know, foundation and a calm where you're not second guessing yourself. When you're long, further along in the enough journey and you go, I'm not all that, you know, that the narcissist has made me out to. I'm actually this. And because they can't say, you're great at this, you're great at that, I appreciate you. You know, you're because they can't mirror back to you your strengths in the ways that you need to, other than the superficial or vacuous, the empty. 
you know, in the Hollywood, you know. Um, that's why I was so glad to come back because I felt where I had come from was a lot of soul, a lot of vibrancy, a lot of style, you know, good, you know, um, music and restaurants that can then typify this and not the false. I mean, if you, you know, I myself, I, I am vegetarian. I do eat fish and I do try to keep it once in a while because I really am feel I feel much better when I eat more of that um, veggie and like asparagus or anything. I mean, a lot of this stuff is so quick and easy, but the narcissist, oh, well, why don't we, you know, get this? Everything is, you know, look at, look at these box dinners from the chicken. I mean, those things can be 3000 calories and people are eating it just for lunch. They have no clue. You know, this is, you know, it's all about sort of someone else's ego and not having respect for your own and then wondering why you're biting them out, getting weak and sicker, and you, you develop eating disorders, uh, gambling disorders, shopping disorders, um, all sorts of other disorders, which can be easily cured. But oftentimes, if you have this sort of um, uh, record, um, that vinyl that's been imprinted really deeply and grooved, and you've played it a lot, and you've made sure you could really listen to the narcissist, then it'll tell you, You've got a lot of narcissists that you have tried to accommodate and a lot of self-sacrifice that you made um, in that time frame. So you really have to be able to sort of come back to self and sort of cradle yourself. Like, like you know, cradle yourself, like just sort of hold um, you where you're at right now in your arms, you know, and just get a, get a, take a step back like the Beatles get back and hold a space for yourself, you know, where you actually feel for a moment where you're not living by the rules and the judgment in the wrong direction of all those proceedings that come from that egotistical person, job, colleague, you know, all the wrong direction, you know, and what you, you know, it's okay to say, I'm not going that way anymore. I'm not that lifestyle. I'm not that person. I'm working on something different. I'm not too cool for school. I'm just, I'm having a, a spa day, guys and, and girls. I'm having a, retre a retreat day. I'm having like one of the Swedish who are perfect at it, the Hog day or whatever they call where they really learn how to really create a warm and cozy environment and they specifically make plans for that like uh to have like a staycation or a retreat within your home how can you add you know add more of this sort of so you know what i always loved in new product development is you know we're we're working with a corporate company and we're making new designs you know um new you know things that have never been there on the shelf before and i developed a a number of wildly successful um, products <laughs> that came to light, like including like the battery operated razor. I mean, a lot of these names, yours truly, little me, peace and harmony. I mean, I have an integral part in, you know, um, but you have to give away your intellectual property. See, I didn't know, even though I was doing these things, I was giving away my value. I was, you know, that this is how these companies make profit, you know? Um, but then when you find yourself undervalued, underappreciated, underemployed, um, you're, you're not feeling your best. And you're, you're really like, how do I, you know, you got to come to a crossroads. You got to come to strength ju junction. You got to come to big rock junction. You got to, you know, c come to, you know, come and then and create that, that space where you've got really some free will flowing um, because oftentimes that's really not actualized um, when you're coming out of a lot of this pandemonium where you've been Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so and you haven't been yourself. You don't have your own identity. You're not, you know, um, you are not encouraged, supported, or to be so. You always are feeling like, you know, you're, you're just not belonging or you're, something is always wrong. Um, are they going to be there? Uh, you know, there are so little by little, it will break you down. See, and they will, they will break you down 
see and I love these these are like these little like um these are these Palto Alto rose rose petals and I always I see in the book that I'm working on it's really important that we get when we talk about these intangible things at least that I always feel it's important for it to be applied and to have results meaning do you really get can I give this some info to you and we can talk about this not that it's too psychoanalytical but that it's a simple enough as a one two three sauce that you can whip up and say I got it peace and harmony I was living you know under a false pretense and therefore I was living under erroneous thinking flawed thinking flawed thinking will result in flawed feelings and that it will cause you to do, uh, make flawed decisions or you know that aren't in your best interest and you're always trying to kind of like steer the ship back on north am I can I can I trust my myself when you have an allowing you see that is the artist when they're allowing to, uh, uh, you know a paint they don't know where their next brush is but they kind of know but then the painting starts to kind of paint itself you have to allow your future to kind of develop you kind of like the the Monet oh my gosh you know oh Monet oh my god his work up close <gasps> Ooh, what genius, man. If you need a recovery date idea, go and take in some, you know, go to an art museum in your area. Go to an art institute. Go to contemporary art wherever. Or some really that you, for you, on you know, and get yourself a healing beverage. Not your typical coffee or your tea. Get something different. This is what I call, it's like a, a multi-sensory healing and transformational transformative date with yourself in other words you come out of that date feeling different you come out of that date feeling oh my god was that a good time I can't wait to have another one that is what you want on your recovery date you want to do something that's for you um you know I've always wanted to you know men I've always always wanted to have a wood shop well, then go down and see if there's any wood that people are throwing out. Get a couple of tools, you know, together at a thrift store and start building something in a dead end of your corner of your basement. And now you're building a, a wood shopping corner, you know. Go and pursue. One, two, three. What do you need to be? What do you need to have be and become that will liberate you from that sort of that fear-based existence, that fear-based thinking, believing and becoming. What does it cause you to do? Oh my God, peace and harmony, a lot of my life. What do I do now? You come back, you put on the Beatles. Get back, get back, get back to where you once belong. And you start singing a little something. And you go, okay, you go, okay, I need to do, I need to remove fear from my life and from my household and from my workplace. This ain't no way to live. Thank you very much. And just like in the book that I'm talking about in, in the recovery journal, you should also have like a procrastination list. These are the things you don't like to do. Taxes, whatever, paying bills, you know, certain things you've been procrastinating about, if you just do a little day by day, like you'll get it done and it'll, it'll no longer be looming above you. Instead, you'll have like this little uh, crystal, you'll have it clear, clarity is looming above you. You know, you don't have that heaviness looming above you, you've already got it processed. These are big important things, it's important that you understand the multi-sensory approach. So for example, on a recovery date, it's so important what you take in with your eyes because that will be reflected through your hands, your ears, what you say. It will come out the other end. I am aware of this as I am a writer, a doodler, all these different things. You know, peace and harmony. You know a lot about me here. I've been, I've had this channel. So I know how important it is what not what we put in 
what do you call this? Your, you know, get this in. You're also consuming with the very eyes. What you cast your eyes in, the fine details of things, will process and come out the other end. So if you start taking in great writing, great visions, you know, great colors, great designs, these you're, you're, you're consuming. If you look at the fine, you know, if you look at um, things and look at the fine detail and, you know, or the high, you know, you're consuming this and, you know, you're, you're consuming these things throughout your day. And if you want to manifest and know your very power of your being, you'll then realize and have reverence for that and realize then that you don't want to consume a lot of junk images, a lot of junk sounds, things that are in the negative or are dumbing you down, making you less cognizant or less aware and not lifting you up and helping you grow. So if you feel that your life is becoming mediocre, look at all the senses then, including the etheric field, the etheric energy, in harnessing these in on the recovery date. So you, you take a moment to specifically get in there and say, I'm going to have an moment. That's what I call a specific time that you can focus on a specific emotion that you want to cultivate and you come into being and you come then into possession and owning and practicing of that. I want to be more creative. Then on your recovery date, you'd say, oh, then maybe I'm going to go to a really beautiful church. Um, it might be open or I'm going to go to a museum or I'm going to, and I'm going to, or I, and I'm really going to maybe um, study art, you know, or I'm going to go and go to a gallery and maybe meet an artist or I'm going to go and then take a class, you know, and there, so these are things that you can then cultivate and then say, well, then on my recovery date, I just want to be very silent and I'm just going to observe and I'm taking my inner creativity out and I'm going to allow my inner creativity to be drawn to whatever speaks to it most. And then, so you might think, oh, I want to be more creative. And then you might just take a stroll through an art store. Oh, peace and harmony. I think this is for kids. Well, you're still a kid too. You are still growing. Thank you very much. You're still needing. You're, you're still sharp. You want to keep yourself sharp. You want to have things going or percolating. You want to have some improvement. You want to go somewhere. You want to feel something or you want to know something. So your recovery date, you might then go there and then you might take time specifically to go or go to an art store and you might just find, or, you know, or an art museum and say, what is my, what is my inner creativity? What is it really, what's really, even though it's simple, what's coming to me? The importance of light, even if it's something very silly, the importance of light. Uh, the importance of different fabrics, um, the importance of different colors of wood, you know, what is coming to you? Um, and then, you know, even if it seems strange, you can jot it down. Um, you can make just a little symbol of it, or you can sketch it out. I've seen some very talented people. Oh my God, the sketches that they make when they're out having a cup of coffee or paying their kids tuition or you know, they're out, uh, you know, with, uh, visiting family and they're out having lunch and they've, they've brought along their doodle uh, journal and they've got some markers, maybe two or three. And they're just, what a way, great way to capture a memory and be more creative. Write something like a haiku. Today I feel strong, therefore I belong. Oh my gosh, peace and harmony. I just Today I feel strong and then I belong. What, you know, and so, and so you might then go in at that art store, you might say, that's really weird, but I like this clay stuff. Like, wouldn't that be cool if I could, and then you start saying, and you thought it was going to be paints, but then you find it's more clay or you thought it was going to be clay and you find it's more music or you want to do something, you know, really different like crystal singing bowls or, 
you find that your inner creativity, you might get creative with movement. And then you say, well, then I want to take like a different type of class or get some different type of tools or how can I incorporate these different types of mediums? And then the scent, you know, comes into being and then you sit with the sawdust and then, you know, and then we, or when you go to the museum, instead of getting the regular, you do something different. You bring something different. Instead of just going, you bring a little notebook and you say, you know what, in the grocery store, I'm going to write down one impression that makes me feel that I would really like to go in that direction in the future, like eating green. And you just write, just write it down, make a commitment to yourself and look back and then take action on that little snippet that you gave yourself. That is the real you that's like, hello, pick me up, the little infant, pick me up, you know, the, where the narcissist, no, I'm not picking you up right now. I'm not listening to you right now. I will not be there for that right now. Um, oh, you know, you, you found out, uh, you know, all sorts of horrific things, terrible things have happened. Uh, this person has uh, another job um, and they're betraying you. They have another marriage um, and they're betraying you and you thought you were going to get married to this person. Oh, no. They've got someone else. Or they were in this job. No, they don't want you to be strong here. They're going to make sure you feel left out, disorganized, uh, da, da, da. They're not the rule of you. You are the rule of you. You are the rule of you. You're the one who rules your you. You're the one who has your DNA. You're the one who, who houses your dreams. You're the one who has that fuel moving forward. And you're the one who's responsible then for saying, okay, let me re reorganize and let me re-rule some things here. Let me get rid of some erroneous and flawed thinking. Let me, you know, and get rid of some of this stuff because the more you can remove that and then you'll liberate yourself for other things to, for you to become. And you can direct it. So it can be like putty in your hands. It, you're not putty in, in, in their rules. So you have to realize to a certain degree, you're going to have to let go of that need or addiction or dream or idealization or idolatry you had of them or that type of lifestyle. And you might um, really then want to sort of go on a different path and you might get very quiet in your life for some time and that's okay. You might need to do some exploring. You might need to do some writing. You might need to do some reformulating and like moving forward and then move forward you will. You've got this. You've got this. Your I am has to be, you have to want it. And that you, you know, and, and realize that you're not that judgment, you know, and, and don't allow yourself to, you know, carry that. So if you've got those guilt feelings that you need to say, I no longer am carrying this guilt. I, I, I no longer, I'm going to give it to the universe to recycle. That would be better use of it. In fact, it would be better use for, for me just to, you know, to not have it, um, to not have this guilt or to not have this relationship or not have this job or not, it's better for me to not be treated this way. And that's what you learn. Those are your lessons learned. It's a very important, but don't take the projection. Don't have someone make you out into something other than you are. And so when you go on those recovery dates, and we're going to be wrapping, wrapping it up here in just a minute, I want you to really understand what that combination should be like for you. So if, if you feel that, you know, um, I want to discover my inner strength, that's enough of a question. I don't know where I'm at. Well, your feet, do you, if you put your feet down, that's where we're, we're right here. We're at where we're at right here, where your feet are at. That's where you're at. And that's where you're supposed to be. <laughs> you're, you're at the right space, you know? So, um, you, you can't then, um, take behavior that is false. Then you have to be true to you and that is okay. And then you can then shape and modulate, modulate. 
you then have power, control, and rule the roost. And so then you can ask yourself, what are 10 rules that I really want to live by today, that I want to live by for myself? You might not have 10, but you might have 20. You might have 10, but you might have one. And one is enough of a start. What are the rules that I live by? That I have to give priority. You know, this has to be, this has to take place. And, and so it is. And then claiming that so that you are the priority and being supported is your, so being supported and, and, and feeling supported might be a priority for you. And you might say, oh, I can see you know what, this person over here, they really are supportive and how kind, you know. So, you know, really, and then fuel yourself up, fill your cuff up with what you desire and make sure you make some radical changes by getting rid of the erroneous and flawed thinking, feelings, and emotions and re reformat them. Really what I feel is reframe them. So if you're feeling, you know, I'm so lonely, you know, I am so liberated. I am so isolated. I am so liberated. I am so liberated here. I am so excited to really take charge of myself and my emotions and steer the ship. I am so excited. I don't know where we're going, you know, but I sure know where I've been, you know. Um, and then, you know, and you just... What, what is that song? Here I go again on my own. You go again. And then, and pretty soon it'll get very clear. And then you'll really begin to shine. You'll really begin to say, that was a good day. It's an especially good day when. And know what that is. Plato, know thyself. Write it down. It's an especially good day. So you might then need to get motivation for yourself. And then what is that motivation? And get leverage over yourself. When I go out, it's not that bad when. I realize things better when. And, and write that out for yourself. And have that as your lesson. Have that as your take home. Have that as your warm embrace that you can actually pick up and embrace within you. So once you do this and you, and you write it down, embrace it. Oh God, I am so grateful. And you seal it with a hug. Seal it. You can kiss your notebook. A lot of people kiss the Bible. Hug the Bible. Hug your own writing. Have reverence and experience what that opening means and that awareness means and that what becoming means because it'll help you become a lot more and you won't have to. You can then shed that self-consciousness and um, doubting that might have permeated your consciousness and you can say instead now I know better I'm going to and then create that that better environment that speaks to you through your eyes only the things that you know lift you up what you hear what you taste what you smell what you feel what you believe and what you become make sure that those are resensitized according to what your needs are and that they're growing for you so you can meet those new goals and dreams one step at a time. This will come in your day, in your dream will be answered and you'll say, yes, I am so glad I am no longer ruled by that ego. Instead, I have the strength within. Have a beautiful day. It's your buddy, peace and harmony.